Hi, Somatic Yoga friends. I'm Megan, and thanks for practicing in this full-length practice with me. It's going to combine somatic movement and some slow flow yoga, and we're going to explore dancer pose. A very endearing pose to me. It does a lot, including it's a balance pose, so it helps you with proprioception. It's a back bend. It will... Uh, wake you up and rejuvenate you. And there's a lot of other things that go on, but I'm just going to show you briefly before we get started what the final pose looks like. So in your mind, and if you want to join me, you can, in your mind, you can visualize some of the movements that we're going to be going through that will prepare you for this posture. So take your weight into either foot that you'd like and lift up one foot. So here's the proprioception, the balance part, right? If you can reach around and grab your back foot, go ahead and do that. So you often see the pose in this form with one hand on the foot, the other hand reaching forward to help us balance. So this is an option, but we're gonna also explore it more as a, what I say, a, a back bend from the central center of the spine, the thoracic spine, where I'm quite tight. And in order to do that, what it'll look like is we'll end up, unless you're very hypermobile, we'll end up putting a strap around the foot. Both hands come up, or both elbows hug in, and we come to here. So just have a, it in your frame of mind that those are the explorations for today. If there is a final goal pose, there you go. So you will need a strap. I would also ask you to have two blocks, a blanket for under your knees. And if you have a slow-mo ball, get your slow-mo ball, but deflate it almost all the way. So we're going to start by coming down onto the ground and get yourself comfortable Pull your knees into your chest and just roll around. Acknowledge your spine. So depending on how we do this posture, we can find more of the bending quality in the lumbar spine, which is quite mobile. Gets a nice bend down there. But also in our thoracic spine. So feel where your ribs are as you rock side to side and recognize wherever you're landing or feeling your ribs, that is your thoracic spine, those 12 vertebrae. And just rocking around, letting yourself find the ground. And then we'll take our feet down and hands to our sides. Take some belly breaths. If you want to place your hands on your belly, you can do that too. Breathing in, feel the abdomen rise, breathing out and emptying. As you're doing so, just allowing yourself to land, to let the whole back body feel supported. And then make your breath a little bit longer and fuller and sweeter on the inhalation. As you do so, gently press your tailbone down or think of lifting or arching your low back. There's your first back bend for today. So we're going to do the arch and curl. And as you breathe out, gently press low back and low ribs. So the, top, the bottom of the thoracic spine, top of the lumbar spine into the ground and lift your tailbone. And we're making this arch on the inhale and curl on the exhale. This is such a simple somatic movement, but it really opens us up for back bends. And you'll see why again in a moment. Take a few, just acknowledging the shape of your spine and then to create a little bit more arch, particularly in the upper spine where we're gonna need it, thoracic spine, begin to press your shoulder blades into the ground as you arch. So as you come onto your tail, you'll also come onto the shoulder blades. Feel almost like your shoulder blades are squeezing towards the spine. Breathing out, lift the outer shoulders as you lift the tailbone. So arching and curling, let your neck go along for the ride. And sensing what part of your spine is bending, noticing the lumbar area, those five vertebrae, and the thoracic, wherever you feel your ribs. And we'll add a little bit more because we do need to have our arms and shoulders open for this. So now as you're inhaling, Externally rotate your arm bones, so roll them away from your heart like rolling pins, and start to slide them overhead. You can still press your shoulder blades down. They might do that automatically. So notice at the top of my inhale, the arch in the back. As I exhale, I'm gonna roll the arm bones back in, lift the tail, lift the shoulders. It's just a nice warm up. Sense when the front body is expanded, stretched on the inhale, and the back body is compressed and contracted. And then on the exhale, front body compressed, contracted, back body expansive. Let it feel good. Dancer pose is a pose about feeling good. And enjoying the ground while we have it to support us. Last one. 
and then pausing. So we're going to take this into a, what I call the somatic version of, of a um, bridge pose. So take your arms to your sides, press the backs of the hands into the ground. Now arch again, press those shoulder blades down, but as you get ready to curl, keep the arch. See if you can keep that arch shape in your low back and lift up the buttocks. Take an inhale up there, exhale, release down. So I'll do that for you again. I'm gonna take my hands to my side so you can see. I'm gonna inhale arch so the lumbar spine's already in a curl, press my shoulder blades down. Exhale, push into my feet and lift up. Take an inhale up there, exhale. Take your spine down one vertebrae at a time like you're taking a piece of tape down to the ground, the upper back, mid, and all the way to the tailbone. So slowly roll it back down. So again, we're going to inhale, create the arch. So your spine is already in a back bend before we even go up. Exhale, push into the feet, lift up. Feel that arch of the spine, take a breath in. Exhale, slowly letting yourself come down one vertebrae at a time. There's one more thing we can add to this if you'd like. I'm gonna take my arms to my sides, inhale and arch, press shoulder blades, find where that back lifts off the ground, keep that arch, arch, arch shape, exhale, lift up. And now on the inhale, if you wanna get the arms ready, you can reach your arms overhead. Maybe I find Milo back there. Take another full breath there, maybe a few. And exhale slowly, like you're painting your spine on the ground, one vertebrae at a time, hands come back down. Let's do two more of these if you'd like to join me. Inhale and arch. Keep that arch shape. Exhale, push into the feet, hug your inner thighs, lift up. Inhale, reach your arms overhead, stretch the arms and shoulders. Take another exhale, take another inhale. Smile, exhale, come down one vertebrae at a time. Arms come back down. All right, last one. Inhale into the arch, keep that shape in your spine. Exhale, press in your feet, lift the pelvis. Inhale, reach your arms over if you'd like. Take an exhale, hold on to it, push into the feet, hug your thighs. One more inhale and a slow release of each vertebrae on the spine and the legs and the arms, all of it. Gooey, gooey and relaxed. All right. So we're gonna move on to find a little bit more core with this work because the core does come in handy when we're doing back bends to keep the, the lumbar spine, the low back safe and happy. So we're gonna take the hands into a little basket, take them behind the base of the skull, probably the lower part of the skull and the neck. And now adding on, as you inhale, press the elbows into the ground. We're still arching, but press those elbows down. As you exhale, curl, but also lift the head up. What I watch for though, is that I'm gonna to continue to look straight up at the sky or towards the ceiling versus tucking the chin. So not changing the shape of the neck, inhaling and arching and exhale, curl. See if you can feel some tightening all through the front of the body some engagement, inhale, release that, arch, exhale, curl, so we're building a little bit of heat here too. If you can, keep your legs relaxed on this, so you're really sensing those front core muscles picking up the weight of your head, you might even feel it into the chest now. Squeeze in as you exhale, inhale, spread the shoulders, stretch the front of the arms, exhaling, lifting up, one more time. Inhale, arch, and exhale, curl, lifting. And this time we're gonna stay, we're gonna slow release down, a little at a time, let your head relax, your arms, and then see if you have the control to slowly release your core. Are you getting warm? My face is getting warm. We're gonna add a little bit onto that one, optionally, of course. You can always continue doing what we were doing. But if you'd like, we're going to take just the left leg up towards the sky. Inhale and take your arch, and as you do that, send the leg forward. So you're gonna see you're gonna have to work a little bit harder. 
As you exhale and curl, bring the leg towards you, and you can bend the knee if you want or keep it straight. Draw your core in. We're going to stick with that leg. Inhale, arch, send the leg out. Press into your elbows, press into your tail, exhale, curl. So you're pressing low back, low ribs into the ground so we can access the core and lift up. Go really slow. The slower you go, the more heat you're going to build. Inhale, arch, feel those strong back muscles that we'll need for dancer. Exhale, curl, feel those front, those front muscles that we'll also need. And take your time, explore a few more. Inhale, arching, pressing elbows and tail. Exhale, curl, lift tail, lift shoulders. You can hold that last one if you'd like. See if you're shaking. And slowly release down. So obviously if you did one side, we're probably gonna wanna do the other side. So hands back behind the head again. Did you know this one was gonna be heating? I told you it'd, it'd ignite you and wake you up, right? Take that right leg up towards the sky. Inhale and arch, and exhale, <clears throat> curl. We'll keep the leg up there for now. So when you're ready, and you don't have to drop the leg all the way, you might do it with a bent knee if that's easier for you. But see if you can extend that leg to wherever. A little more work then as you exhale and bring the leg back in. I like to imagine that as I inhale and arch, and let that leg drop, I can feel my back muscles engage. And as I exhale, my front muscles are lifting, my front core muscles are lifting the leg back up. Oop, I'm cheating, looking, taking my nose towards my chest. So remember to keep the neck long, look straight up at the sky. That way we get a little more activation in the upper chest muscles. Taking a few more, feeling your heat, inhaling and arching. Exhale, curl. Little leg stretch going on here too. Inhale and arch. Last one. Exhale, curl. Hold for a few breaths. So can you feel all the strength in your front body? And slow release, release all the way down. All right, we're going to uh, roll to our side. And I'm on my left side. So if you would come onto your left side with me, that would be grand. You can use your left arm as a pillow, or if you have the blanket there and you prefer to use a blanket, you can. We are going to be rolling our head. So start with the head on there, on your arm or on the, on the blanket. So this one, we're going to start to feel a little bit what a dancer pose might look like if we had the floor to support us. So imagine that you're standing on your left leg. That will be your standing leg for this imagery. As you breathe in, sweep your right arm up overhead and sweep your right leg behind you. Just stretch it out a little bit. And then as we breathe out, you're gonna draw the right leg in towards your body. Take your right hand, place the hand on the rib cage, and you're gonna roll into a rotation. So the rotation is just a nice balance for the back bend. So inhaling and reaching, finding the movement first. So arm and leg on the right side going in opposite directions. Start to open up that hip flexor. We need that for dancer too. Exhale, rotating. You might want to keep your legs straight as you come forward if you want more of an outer hip stretch or bend the knee. Reaching, crossing the midline with arm and leg and exhaling and rotating. And you can even imagine when we go into the pose, the right leg is going to be behind you. The left leg would be your standing leg. And we'll be using that right arm, perhaps, to hold the leg. But for now, just enjoy the movement. Take a few more. Extending through your right side body as you breathe in. And rotating to the right as you breathe out. One more round, enjoying the movement of it. And then we're going to kind of put these two together. So you're going to exhale, roll into your, roll into your, uh, into your rotation, and then inhale, take the leg behind you, but instead of reaching your arm, take the arm and see if you can grab the foot. Now here's where if you have a strap and if you can't grab your foot, by all means, take a strap, put it around the foot. You can do it that way. 
and take that foot behind you. So what we want to double check too is with the arm. We want the arm in external rotation when we hold it. So roll your arm bone away from your heart, grab the strap or your foot. You can use your other arm underneath you if, as a pillow if you want. And we're just going to take a few breaths here, holding the foot or the strap. And image yourself standing on your left leg. And can you feel that little bit of a back bend? So here's where I like to check. Is there too much compression, too much discomfort in the lumbar spine? If that's the case, and if it's all going in the low back, then take an exhalation and bring your tailbone forward or lengthen the low back, bring the thigh bone forward, and then try to bend a little bit more from your, from your thoracic spine, from your, verte from your vertebrae where the ribs connect. So you can lengthen low back, come more into the center of the spine and upper back. So when we have a support of the floor, we have this ability to find where do we want to land in our back bend. The other thing you can start to play with is creating force by pushing the right foot into your hand or into the strap. You'll see that as I start to push, that leg will go back further and I'm in a more active stretch. The hamstrings are going to contract in the right leg. Take a few more breaths there. All right. See, you already did your first dancer pose. Nice job. Release that. It's probably my favorite way to do it. <laughs> Let's switch and do the other side. So if you would be kind enough to roll onto your right side. And you can use your arm as a pillow or take a blanket underneath you. Pause for a moment to acknowledge your right side supporting you. And then when you take a breath in, you can slide the left hand overhead and reach the left leg behind you. Open up those hip flexors and the left leg. We need that too. As you breathe out, pull the leg in. Take your left hand, place it on your rib cage and slowly rotate the spine. So left shoulder blade towards the ground behind you. Just come into the rotation. Inhale and reach and extend through the left side. Exhale, rotate. So in some ways, if you're a yogi who practices dancer pose, you might think, well, this is kind of cheating because the floor is holding us. But what this does is it gives us an opportunity to feel what muscles might help support us and also find the mobility that we need, reaching with the arm and the leg. And exhaling and rotating. So stay present in yourself. Notice what you're feeling. When can you feel tissue stretch? When do you feel skin stretch? And when do you feel skin compress? Muscles compress. You're welcome to take one or two more. And then next time you drop into the twist, kind of keep that left arm to the back. But inhale, take the leg back. And if you would like, you can take your strap again. Put your strap around your foot. And begin to draw your leg back. You can extend through your bottom right leg as if you're standing on it. I even will flex that right foot so I imagine myself standing on it. Here's where you want to find where your spine is most comfortable. So the other thing I look at is if my rib cage is sticking way out or my belly, I know that just by tucking that tail a little bit, drawing my navel center in, that's going to draw my rib cage in. And then I can build the back bend from above the rib cage just a little bit more. So lengthen the low back. And then begin to push your foot into the strap or into your hand. A little more active stretch through the front of the hip flexors and through the shoulder. I feel that through the shoulder. See if you can just be present in this position, noticing where you're landing in your spine. Is it comfortable? And I look at things, if the elbow and the thigh are really wide, hug your inner thighs together. That'll create more stability for the hips. Hug that inner left thigh towards the ground just a little bit. Can you feel the openness in the front of the left thigh and the front of your left shoulder? Create just enough stability by pushing the foot into the hand or the strap. And where is your spine? 
and then release that. Let it go. We're gonna come up and we're going to go into a lunge position. So with this one, we are gonna be on our knees for a moment doing some kind of funky stuff too. So you might want to put a blanket down and spread it out. Always helpful. So we're gonna come onto our knees, bring your left foot forward first into a lunge, lunge position. If you have your blocks and if you feel really rounded through your spine, then go ahead and take your blocks because then you can get more of a back bend. So if I'm down here on the floor, it's really hard to come into a back bend. So use those blocks underneath you. We're just going to inhale and come forward and take the shoulders back, find a little bit of extension of the spine. As you breathe out, round and go back. So pose, counter pose. Extension of the spine and back. And as some of you may know, I usually like to play different tunes in the same foot position. So we can go back and forth. We can also make circles. You might bring both blocks to the insides, inside of that left foot. So do your, do your funky lunge wherever you need to open up. Now we're stretching the back of the left thigh, those hip flexors as we come forward. And here's the next opportunity. So we're gonna hold this posture. Draw your hips forward, draw your pelvis forward, but hug your thigh bones, so create some stability. Hands can stay in the blocks. If you want to open through the arms a little bit more, reach your arms up, take your palms together, and then see about, even if it doesn't touch, hug your elbows towards your ears and reach towards the back of the neck. So this is that second version of Dancer where the arms are both overhead. So we can watch here too, is there too much compression in the lumbar spine? Pull the pelvis back a little bit, tuck your tailbone or draw the navel center in, and then see if you can bend more from the center of your spine. Let those elbows be open. So just by backing, if I'm too deep into the lunge, I'm gonna put all that pressure compression in my low back. So I'm a little bit, little bit out of it, a little bit further to the back with my pelvis. And then second version here, if you'd like, you can take one hand to the block, left hand, reach around. If that right foot is available, grab it. You could also take your strap to the right foot. You've got time to do that. You could strap it, push in, or if you're there, take both hands. We're just letting our shoulders open up a little bit, hugging the thighs. Take a few more breaths here. Check to see that the back bend is supported by a little bit of your abdominal area. So drawing that, remember the arch and curl. If you're only stuck in the arch, curl a little bit. Feel that. And then release. Okay, we're going to take our hands down, take the foot back, and do a little cat-cow. Inhale into your arch, and exhale into your curl. Little counter pose here. Inhale, arch. And exhale, curl. I like to explore a little bit deeper release. So on the inhale, you can arch. And as you exhale and curl, press your hips back towards your heels. Inhale, you could drop your elbows. Imagine dragging your elbows towards the back of the mat, your head forward, and create more of an undulation of the spine. Exhale, press back. So keeping it at that standard cat-cow are creating a little bit more forward and back movement, increasing that undulation of the spine. It's a release. It's a hydration for your whole spine. And settling in, if it's comfortable in the child's pose, if you prefer not to come into the child's pose, you could just um, stay up a little bit more if your knees don't want it, or you could do a wide leg child's pose. Take five or 10 rounds of breath in the child's pose. Breathing into your back body. Release any tension as we get ready to do the second side of the lunge. Come forward, bringing your right leg and foot forward. 
Grab your blocks. So again, you're not doing yourself any favors if we round it. So bring those blocks in, place them right underneath your shoulders. And inhale and come forward. Think of your arch. Draw your shoulders back. Exhale, curl. So it's that same movement for the spine. We're just adding a little more stretch to the back of the left thigh as we come forward. And the front of the right leg as we come back. Hello, right hamstrings. But just noticing what you can notice. Maybe some kneecap music. That's what's happening here. And if you want to switch it up a little bit, you can bring both blocks to the inside of the right foot. You can think of more of a circular pattern from your pelvis or even rocking from the big toe to little toe side of that right foot. Increasing the inner groin stretch. Be playful. Let your spine take a little swim. I mean, most of your body is water, right? Strong spine swimming in that body of water. And we're going to find our place to pause, so probably want one block to either side. Come forward. But just come forward enough to where you can still hug the left thigh forward and the right thigh back. Or imagine dragging the right heel towards the back of the mat so you feel stabilized through your legs. And from there, you might come up just to the thigh. You can start there. If it's available to you, reach the arms up and then take your palms together. See if you can start to go towards the back of the neck. Watch that you're not turtling your head forward, so press the neck gently into the hands. And if, if, like me, you're feeling a lot of compression in your low back, draw your pelvis back a little bit, do a curl with the low back, and then inhale, arch from the upper back. And breathe. Don't forget to breathe. There's a lot of balls in the air, hugging the thighs. Keeping the low back long or comfortable. See if you can access the breath all around the entire circumference of the rib cage. And then release arms to do the second version. You can just start to come onto the kneecap of the left leg. You might reach around with just one hand or put the strap on. If both hands are available, take both hands down there. Let your, let your chest come forward. And here's again where you can push the foot slightly into the hands to feel a little more stretch through the arms. But as we feel the stretch of the, of the arms because we're pushing into the foot too much and I fall over, resist that by plugging the arm bones into the shoulders. So we create that stability by, it's like a push-pull, creating our own resistance in our body. And release that. All right, this time we're going to come in and out of a anahata asana or sometimes called puppy pose. So keep the hips high, take the hands out, walk them out in front of you and inhale, come into your arch. And as you exhale, keep that arch, but take the heart and the head down to the ground. So you can inhale, create the arch, come forward, exhale, melt the heart down to the ground. We actually refer to this sometimes as melting heart pose. Inhaling and arching. Exhaling. Melting. And just do a few more of these in pulsation until you find where you want to land. On your forehead, your head, you can keep your arms extended. If that doesn't feel good, bend the elbows, let them fall. If you want a little bit more, Take the palms together, press your elbows into the ground, hug your arm bones towards your ears. And just like we did in the lunge, bend your elbows and bring your thumbs towards the back of the neck. Even here, you can find that little bit of curl on the exhalation, arch through the center of the spine on the inhale. I like to keep the legs slightly engaged by pushing the tops of the feet into the ground, hugging the inner thighs, feel the stability. Good. 
Three more rounds of breath. It's a really good shoulder opener for this, for this posture, for a dancer. Not to mention the loveliness that it creates in and around your heart. Release the pose. Okay, so request for a blanket. If you didn't follow it before, you might want it now. So we're going to take what looks like a gate pose. Take your left leg out to the side. Right knee will stay on there. Then first just make some circles from your torso and your pelvis. Warm up that left leg a little bit. And then we're going to start to bring the right hand down to the ground. So if it doesn't easily come to the ground without dropping the left shoulder, take your block on whatever height. You can put the block underneath your hand. And then roll that left shoulder back. And you're going to take your left arm and you're going to inhale and externally rotate it and look behind you just a little. Push into your right hand. Draw your right thigh forward. As you exhale, roll it inward and downward. So we're creating that arm spiral that we'll need. Inhaling and opening and let your head follow. Exhale, internal rotation and kind of close. I'm also on inhaling, creating the back bend, bringing my rib cage and thigh slightly forward and exhaling and closing back up. Slow spiral movements, rolling to the left and then rolling to the floor in front of you. And then eventually, and this may be another one for the strap, you're going to roll open, see if you want to lift this leg up. And if you can, grab the foot. If it's not easy access, easily accessible, take the strap. And you can put the strap around the foot. So open that arm again, and you can do strap to the foot and draw in. So here, I have unusually long arms. So this is not, me being able to grab my foot has nothing to do with the flexibility of my spine. My thoracic spine is actually very tight. My arms are long, so we have to know our proportions. <laughs> Be real with yourself. But then begin to push the foot into the strap or the hand and sense that bow-like position that's being created in your left side of your torso. Breathe. Find a good place for your head to land. Maybe take the skull back just a little bit. And we're going to slowly release it down. But here comes the fun part. So after all that back work, it's nice to take a counter pose to engage our core. Lots of ways we can do this. We're going to do it the intuitive way. So think about keeping your weight in your right knee and just lifting your left leg up and start to notice what happens. I may even fall over on camera. But what I'm doing is I'm very intuitively switching the ability for my body to stay up into my core muscles, my intuitive core, my four deep core, are turning on to keep me from falling down. And if you wanna play with this one a little bit more, going back into the somatics, you can go back to grabbing your foot or putting the strap on. So here's that dancer pose on our knee. If you touch the floor, it's okay. It's not hot lava or anything like that. <laughs> Knee might come down. Try to move yourself just enough to feel where your core is keeping you upright because this will help with our balance, our proprioception, when we go to doing this on the right leg. Even visualize yourself standing on your right leg right now. You see how the right arm becomes like the flapper to help you, to help you from falling, right? Your counter pose right here. I call it ballast. I used to sail, so it's like the ballast arm. <laughs> but play with it. And take it down, relax. Okay. Let's switch knees. If you would please extend your right leg out to the side. You were on your left knee. And just create some circles first. You also wanna be able to extend through that right leg, inner groin. You're pressing into the big toe side of the right foot. Let your pelvis go back and forth. So not locking yourself into any position. Using movement to create sensation and feel. And then where do you feel like you can stack your shoulders over your hips? Begin to hug your inner thighs. Take your hand down to the ground. If it's a bit of a reach for you, put the hand on the block. 
And once we're there, you're going to inhale and spiral the arm bone outward. Think of it like a rolling pin. As you do that, press into that hand in the bottom there on the ground. Open up. And breathe out. Spiral the arm bone inward. And drop. So feel at the top of the inhale the position you're in. That arch in the right side of the body. The little stretch in the front of the right shoulder. Like a flower opening and closing. Get your pelvis and your torso more involved as you breathe in and take the arm up. Bring the thigh bone, that bottom left thigh bone forward. Arch your back. Might even feel your gluteal muscles and your buttocks and your hamstrings engage. And exhale, drop back. And then eventually we'll take one where we'll stay. So you can externally rotate the arm. If it's there, bring that right thigh in. Sometimes it's easier to grab in front of you here, but you can bring it in. You can put the strap around your foot. In that case, you got to put it down first and see if you can take the hand so that here's the other key when we go into it. We want that external rotation. So we want to have the hand on the sole of the foot. If you're using the hand with the thumb in the middle of the foot and we're holding the big toe side of the foot, not the outside pinky toe, but the big toe is that external rotation of the arm. Settling in and opening up. Left thigh forward. Another position to check where is your spine and is it comfortable or is it all, is this whole back bend landing in your lumbar area? Then take an exhalation, curl a little bit, even let the right thigh come forward. And then inhale, start to bend more from your rib cage. Make it more active in the legs by pushing the right foot into the hand, resisting with the hand and arm. Two more rounds of breath. And see yourself standing on your left leg, creating this beautiful posture. Releasing, calming down. So the counter pose is going into the core intuitively. You might start by just feeling your weight transfer into your left knee and you could just lift your right knee up. <laughs> See what happens. This is like the dancer pose dance. <laughs> Not asking my body to dance, it's just doing it to keep me balanced. If you want to play with it some more, you can grab that right foot, however you want at this point. <laughs> it's not very far for the knee to come down. Play with your balance. What would it be like to be doing this standing on your left leg? And can you feel the way your intuitive core muscles are going to help to keep you upright without asking them? They're very smart, just like you. <laughs> Whoop. Play for a few more moments. And we'll take it down. Okay, so we're going to go up into a standing posture now. I'm going to do a little cleanup on my way. And we're going to explore those different versions of dancer pose. You're going to need a wall or a window. So I'm going to step back to my wall, my window wall, and just allow your weight to transfer from left foot to right foot a few times. And if you can, close your eyes. Keep your ears over your shoulders and your shoulders over your hips. So playing with this, where is our balance right now? And then eventually settle your weight into your left leg. Feel how far your pelvis has to transition. And then you can either lift your right leg up, you can help it, and just put the sole of the foot on the wall or the window. Or if you can get the top of the foot to the wall or window, please do that. I'm about six inches or so from the wall. So that's the other thing. If you come a little bit further from the wall, then that might be more accessible for you. But see if you can get your foot, the sole of the foot, or the top of the foot to the wall. And then from there, take your fingertips into the wall, first below you, and just puff up your chest. Take a breath in. 
puff the chest in as you breathe in. Exhale, maybe take that tailbone down just a little bit. Lengthen the low back. So we can stay here. Getting a nice stretch. And we can activate more just by pushing the foot into the wall and hugging your inner thighs. Feel your legs more. But if we want to prepare for the version with both arms overhead, take your arms, reach them up. And see if you can take your fingertips to the wall behind you <clears throat> overhead. And you might even take your head into the wall, the base of the skull. So this is a nice big opening stretch for the whole front body. Feel it, be present. And we'll slowly release. Take a moment to shift your weight from side to side again. Recognize what your left leg just did for you. Gratitude to the wall for holding me up. <laughs> May not always be that easy. And then shift your weight into your right leg. So be playful, but be present. And then sole the foot to the, to the wall, or if you can get the top of the foot, take the top of the foot to the wall. Start with your fingers down low. And by pushing your fingertips, I'm on the tips of my fingers, there's more feeling from the tips. I'm gonna inhale and just feel like I'm puffing up my chest, like a proud bird. As I exhale, tuck the tail just a little bit, hug the inner thighs, begin to push the top of the foot, that left foot into the ground. Also push your heel or think of your right leg as your roots. Let your right leg go down into the earth and then lift up your kneecap and your thigh. We can stay here. You can take one or both hands overhead. Reach up, hug your arms towards your ears, relax your, relax your <clears throat> shoulder blades down your back just a little bit. And maybe the head goes back into the wall. See what your, what your vestibular system in your brain tells you where your balance is. I like to rest my head there. And just create nice open space through the whole front line of the body. Strength through your right standing leg. Just enough resistance between the wall and your foot. And breathe. Can you breathe through the circumference of your lungs? Last breath in. And release to come out. So you've already done two dancer poses as far as I'm concerned. But we're going to explore another version. But before we do that, take yourself into a slightly a wider stance, slightly wider than hips, turn your toes out, and just take your hips and thighs back and forth. Let's give them a little meltdown time. You can shift your pelvis. Maybe you want to make circles with the shoulders, just releasing the legs. Half circles, full circles. Letting your back and spine relax, stretching the low back just a little bit. Okay. So let's go back into that left leg first. And we're going to the, do the one-handed version where we tend to bend more from the lumbar area. So if you're using your strap, you can put the strap around the right foot right now. So this version, using the strap, you may even do it with your left hand, excuse me, while I turn to you, away from you, left hand at the wall for more support, right? But I can start to find this feeling of actually balancing in the left leg. So the strap can be there on your foot. You can start to pull it up for the strap or act either way, external rotation of the arm. So roll the arm bone away. See if you can take the thumb to the center of the foot on the big toe side. Hug your thighs together. And you can reach forward. Use this left hand for ballast. And let your torso come forward. So this is our version one. Play with it. Find your stability. Again, hand could be on a wall. So my... My only beef with doing standing poses is that we do standing poses to increase our proprioception and our balance. But the truth of the matter is that if I were to fall, I'm probably not standing still and fully conscious of my body. So if you want to make it uh, more practical, move a little bit. <laughs> 
and notice those core muscles kicking in. Drop yourself down, go back and forth. Just play. And come down, relax. Shift your weight from left to right. And sense any differences, any unevenness. Does the left leg feel more fatigued than the right? That's good. It was working. And begin to shift your weight into your right leg. You can grab the strap, put the strap around your left foot. But as you shift, here's the other thing is I like to make sure that I'm engaging. So I'm not going to use my hand to bring my leg up. I'm going to use my leg muscles to bring my leg up. And then, so even from there, you might have hand on the wall, bring my leg muscles, use my leg muscles, and then put that strap around, or you can put it down there and still use your leg muscles, but put the strap on there. So finding the balance in the right leg, external rotation, and allowing your shoulders to go in front of your pelvis. Use your right arm for balance if you'd like. You can push the top of the foot into your hand or into the strap. So notice as you do that, the foot will want to pop up, but that'll also bring you more into a back bend. Maybe bring your spine more forward. And then make it real. Move a little bit. <laughs> Put some music on. Do a little happy dance in your dancer pose. Let your brain feel yourself balancing on your right leg. Not just a stretch, but... Is your whole proprioceptive sense of sensibility available to you? Where are you in space? And that's why I like this version. Go ahead and come down, come out. Okay. So the last one we're going to do is the full version with, with the arms, which you did it at the wall. But I'm going to have you take a block and take that block and begin to... Um, Take both palms, push the palms of the hands into the block, create an L shape, and keep that L shape and start to lift up as high as you can go. So we're going to open the shoulders first. So keep going up, up, up. You might feel this from all the work we did. So as you're going up, watch you're not going into what I call the chicken butt. Your tailbone's not sticking up. Take a little bit of a tuck in the tail, keep your low back long, and keep going up. Let your head follow if you'd like. Lengthen on exhalation, bring tailbone down, lengthen low back, inhale, move from your rib cage. We want to watch that our elbows aren't doing this out to the sides, hug your elbows together. Take your gaze up. And now just see from this position, what does it feel like to let your weight just transfer into your left foot? Now I'm going to have to lift the right foot up, maybe come onto the toes. What does that feel like? Because putting our head up like that is definitely going to change things for your balance. And then switch. Put your weight into your right foot. Maybe just come on to the left toes. And take it down. Okay. So if we want to try the final version, unless you're very hypermobile in your spine, you're going to want to use the strap. We'll do our balance as our left leg first. So you can go ahead and put the strap around your right foot. You're going to need a long strap. So mine happens to have a loop in it. So I go with the loop. <laughs> but you're going to need a long strap. Take your weight into your left foot. Of course, you can repeat one of the other versions, even at the wall. Weight into the left foot. Start to lift that right leg up. Squeeze it in. So I'm going to feel glutes and hamstrings engage first. Keep lifting it. Keep lifting it without the help of the arms. And then take those arms, come overhead, hug your elbows together, walk your hands down the strap, keep hugging the elbows, think about what we just did in that last pose, and then push the foot into the strap. And notice how now pushing the foot into the strap will create a little bit more of a back bend in the upper back. If not, take that tailbone down, bring your thigh slightly forward, and find that. Find where it feels good. Take a few more breaths. I remember doing this when we were laying on our side body. We were doing it with one arm, which you can do. We had this arm on the, on the ground. And go ahead and release. Let go. 
So a lot of times it helps to do these poses on the ground when we are supported and visualize them in the mind. Now see yourself coming onto your right leg. You can put the strap around the left foot. Always option to take one hand to a wall too, right? You could do it, I'll show it at the wall. I can come up here, keep my right hand on the wall, just the left elbow up towards the sky. So if I don't wanna go full balance yet or even sideways, but I'm gonna lift the leg up with the strength of my hamstrings and glutes, hug it in, hug the inner thighs together and see if both hands wanna go on the strap. Begin to walk the hands down the strap, but then push, resist that walking up by pushing the foot into the strap. See where your spine needs to be. Hug your elbows toward your ears. Keep breathing all the way around. Full breathing around your rib cage. Full structural breath. Just feel yourself open, spacious. Notice I didn't ask you to move on this one because if I do, I'll definitely fall over, but you can. <laughs> and release that, come down. Okay, we're gonna come back down onto the ground. Take your time. And the first thing we're gonna do is bring ourselves down onto our back. Take your arms out to your sides. We're gonna do what I call the somatic windshield wipers. So as you breathe in, reach your left inner knee and thigh towards the center of the mat and forward, right kneecap stays up towards the sky and reach your left arm overhead. So what we're doing is creating that arch through the left side body, very similar to what we were doing in the dancer pose, but now we're relaxed on the ground. Exhale, release it down, and then switch. Bring your inner right thigh to the center of the mat, tip onto the big toe side of the foot, reach your right arm overhead. So you're creating the arch through the right side body and the length, exhale, release. Just going side to side, see if your head wants to roll. Inhale, create arch and length through one side. Exhale, release. So it's almost more like a one-legged windshield wiper. And feel yourself moving from your toes, tipping onto the big toe side of the foot. You can do the movement from your kneecap. Just enjoy landing on the ground. Still an opportunity to press one shoulder blade into the ground instead of just reaching through the arm, pushing the arm, the arm that's overhead, pushing that shoulder blade into the ground. But mostly just creating that juiciness, that soft, subtle flow that tells you that we're coming to the end of our class to the best posture shavasana our relaxation if you want to stop and hold one side please do just pause let the weight of the body rest in the bones Whatever side you're stopped on, breathe into that lung. Even though the bones and the muscles are still, sense the movement of the side of that body just with your breath. Release as you breathe out. And if you took a hold on one side, take a hold on the other side. Lengthening and curving and letting go. Let the bones hold you in that position, release the muscles. Accept the support of the ground. Breathe into the lung where you feel more space. Direct your energy and awareness into that side of the body, into that side of the spine. and slowly release. So we're gonna finish what I said is, if you have a slow-mo ball, I'm gonna show it with a slow-mo ball. I'm also gonna show it with a blanket because I know not everybody has a slow-mo. So I'll show the blanket first. If you're using a blanket, 
you're going to take the blanket and just roll it maybe one or two times, just a slight bit. Don't want to be too high. We're not looking to do a back bend. We're looking to do more of a gentle movement practice. And it's going to go right across the um, lower shoulder blades. If you happen to have a bra top on, you can go by that. But right about there and come back and down. And if we're using the blanket, let yourself settle in. See if it's the right amount of lift for you so you're not fighting it. You have to be able to land first. And we're just going to see if we can move our body from that space where we're feeling the blanket roll. And it's very doable with a blanket. But if you have the slow-mo, then take the slow-mo, same thing. It's going to go right in the back of the heart. It's going to land on the rib cage just below the shoulder blades. Find the right spot for you. And whatever you've landed on, sense your rib cage. You might even place your hands on your rib cage. And let your rib cage and your thoracic spine do a happy little dance. If you're feeling too much compression in your low back, what I do is I lift my tail up and lengthen it and flatten the low back a little bit and go back to moving from the rib cage. So just isolating that movement in the thoracic spine. Heads relaxed. It can respond to the movement of the spine. And you can decide. Some people like to be a little lower down towards the pelvis. Other people like to be a little higher between the shoulder blades. And stretch your arms overhead. And stop now for a moment and land. You might notice too, I have my feet on the floor with my knees bent. If I were to take my legs long, for me, my back, my low back arch is too much and there's a lot of pull. So feet on the floor with the knees bent allows that low back to be long. Just a nice natural curve. And then take one more round of movement. Locate yourself right from your heart. And we can move from the rib cage, that bony landmark. But you could also move from your organ of the heart. You could move from your spleen on the left side or your liver on the right side. Accomplishment doesn't come in making bigger movements. It comes in being able to connect with yourself from the inside with the organs, the bones, the muscles, and freely move them and sense where the movement is coming from and where it's landing. And then pause. Be still. Check to see you're completely comfortable. If you want to extend the legs, you can, or just let the inner knees fall together. Wherever your arms want to be, be still for one minute in this posture. And then after that minute, if you prefer to come off the ball, you can roll off for a final shavasana, or you can stay on the ball for shavasana itself. Use the ball now to land. into your back body, the support of your back body, the feet, the arms. Locate yourself in all 12 vertebrae of your thoracic spine. Maybe feel the gentle stretch in the front of the rib cage, the compression in the back of the rib cage. Can you release into the compression and breathe into the expression of the expansion in the front. What kind of space are you creating around the center of your heart?
Maybe taking a few full breaths in and out of the lungs, picturing the bottom lobes of the lungs at the bottoms of the rib cage, middle lobes, the middles of the rib cage, upper lobes of the lungs, all the way under your collarbones. And from the back side. When you're ready to come off your ball, just gently roll to one side without lifting your head. As little effort as possible, remove the ball. Roll back onto your back. Whatever position suits you, legs long, knees bent. And take at least one full minute to just integrate all of the lovely work you did. Part of the integration is what you're feeling now. Sometimes things don't reveal themselves until we're done. Looking at things like the length of your legs, how they feel, or the way your pelvis is resting on the ground. Do you have more openness in your shoulders or your chest? Can you connect with each individual vertebrae in your spine, each muscle and each nerve? Send them love and light and happiness. Acknowledge all the strength in your body that allowed you to do several versions of the dancer pose. Please feel free to stay here as long as you'd like. When you're ready to get up, take your time rolling to one side. Final counter pose could be a little fetal curl. Draw your knees into your chest, round your back and spine. Just rock yourself there. From this place of enclosure, just like the flower, Open yourself up one more time. Come back into your day. Enjoy your day. And thank you for dancing with me. And thank you, patrons, for all of your sponsorship. Any comments are always appreciated, as well as remembering to subscribe. Say hello to me. Peace, joy, love, and light.